The floor is yours. That's very kind of you. It's, it's anticlimactic because you've already heard from the most important person from whom you need to hear. Uh, but it's very kind of you to take the time. Uh, I have known Judge Amy Coney Barrett for just shy of 20 years. And I want to thank you, the ranking member, uh, Senator Feinstein, the, the distinguished members of the Judiciary Committee, Senator Young and Senator Braun for the opportunity to speak about her here today. Uh, I first came to meet her when as dean of the law school together with my colleagues we recruited her to the faculty in 2002. i was aware of her reputation as a law student but i had not taught her so i can well remember that in the initial interview from my standpoint i was not thinking of her so much as a notre dame alum but rather as a candidate in whom many law schools would have an interest uh, after all, she was first in her class. She was executive editor of the Law Review. She had held two distinguished clerkships for demanding jurists, Judge Lauren Silverman on the Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit and Justice Antonin Scalia, a short period in private practice at then at Baker Botts and an Olin Fellowship at George Washington University Law School. So from my standpoint as dean in a market in which law schools compete aggressively for candidates with sterling credentials like her, Amy Coney Barrett was a big hit and a big win for us. In the course of the next few years, I was responsible for creating an environment in which she could take her potential and reach the maturation that would be necessary to meet the demanding standards of excellence in scholarship and teaching for promotion to tenure. I want to assure you that it was the easiest task of my entire 10 years as dean. I watched her develop into an exceptional teacher and a superb scholar. Except that I must confess to say watching her develop is a bit of a misnomer because in many ways, Judge Barrett sprang full grown into the legal academy. The first of three distinguished teaching awards that she holds from our students was presented to her by only the second class that she taught. And in my annual visits to observe her classroom teaching, it became clear to me why that was the case. Our students then and now hold her in awe for the power of her intellect and for her consummate professionalism. To read her student teaching evaluations is like reading a thesaurus that only has superlatives in it. Uh, her classes are known for the clarity of the presentation of substantive legal material, but also for open-minded, non-directive discussion, question and answer, respectful of differences and of differences in learning style with our students. Our students strive to meet her high and demanding expectations because they just don't want to disappoint her. Uh, and they greatly appreciate her availability outside the classroom for mentoring and support. At the same time that she was developing and building relationships with our students, she also produced an incredible portfolio of scholarship, superb in both its depth and its quality. Scholars around the academy hold her work in the highest regard. And so when it did come time for her tenure case, I can only tell you without breaching the confidentiality of that process, that it was as easy as a tenure case could possibly be. Her work appears in leading law reviews, University of Chicago, Columbia, Cornell, Virginia, and Texas, to name but a few. I was not surprised in later years when she was tapped for service on the Appellate Advisory Committee on the Federal Appellate Rules of Procedure and elected to the prestigious American Law Institute. And in her three years as a judge on the Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, her opinions have been characterized by the same qualities as her scholarship intellectual rigor, painstaking analysis, clarity of legal reasoning and of writing, uh, accompanied by her deep commitment as a jurist to apply the law to the facts of the case before her. Stellar as her professional accomplishments are, no introduction of Professor Barrett is complete without talking about her personal qualities. She is brilliant, but humble, fair and impartial, but empathetic, open-minded and respectful of differences, a skilled listener and able to build consensus, generous, especially to those in need. If I had to describe her in just a few words, I would tell you that Amy Coney Barrett is a woman who leads an integrated life of mind, heart, and soul. And it's that integration that allows her to move so seamlessly uh, between her professional responsibilities and her family commitments. It humbles me now, as it did 12 then, 12 years ago, that I was tasked at one point in my life with evaluating the professional qualifications of Judge Barrett in a university setting. 
Truth be told, she ran circles around me as a junior faculty member, and in the intervening years, she has left me completely in the dust. And nothing gives me more joy than to be able to say so, because this is the standard of excellence that we should demand for institutions of singular importance to us. I have only had two opportunities to communicate with this distinguished committee. The first was 10 years ago when I wrote a very strong letter of support for then nominee, now Justice Elena Kagan, whose tenure as Dean of Harvard Law School overlapped with my own tenure as Dean here. The second is today in presenting Amy Coney Barrett to you and endorsing her in equally strong terms. There may be some who would find those two recommendations in juxtaposition, but I find them entirely consistent. Over the course of my 40 years in the legal academy, I've been blessed with the opportunity to meet many Supreme Court justices. As to the justices I've met, while their judicial policy, philosophies may differ and their interp interpretive methodologies may differ, what they share is powerful intellects, rigorous work ethics, skilled listening skills, the ability to be open to persuasion and also to persuade themselves. To be fair and impartial, they are people of integrity and they have a commitment to applying the law to the facts of the case before them. They understand that their role as justices is to advance the rule of law, not to advance personal policy preferences. They understand their solemn responsibility to preserve the court as an institution, not wings of the court, the court, a single institution that plays a singular role in our republic. I know firsthand from having worked with closely with Judge Barrett for almost 20 years that she possesses all these same qualifications in abundance. And I trust that over the course of the next few days, with the opportunity to engage in dialogue with her, that you will come to the same conclusion and recommend her for confirmation as an Associate Justice to the Supreme Court of the United States. Thank you so much for taking this late opportunity to have me say a few words about Professor Barrett.